I can't tell what's wrong or right. Should I go without saying goodbye? Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to have y'all here. Of course, the dogs start playing the second we sit down to film every time like clockwork. Today's video, we are going to compare and go over the Chicago Marathon and the New York City Marathon. I ran both. Chicago was October 8th, New York City was November 5th. Instead of sitting down to recap both races, I figured we could do a little comparison video and recap both somewhat at the same time. So in case you don't know, both of them are world major marathons. There are six total rumors that they're adding a seventh. I actually think it's more than a rumor. I think it's true and they're between a couple of different places. But the six world majors are Chicago, New York, Boston, Berlin, Tokyo, and London. I will include a link in the description to a post that is really helpful on how to gain entry into all of the world majors. We'll start there with how to get into both Chicago and then New York. For Chicago, you can enter a lottery spot, you can do a charity spot, and then you can also qualify. I believe that there is a way to get into Chicago as well if you have run X amount of years in a row for Chicago already. I believe that you are guaranteed a spot every year beyond a certain number. That is to my knowledge what I know of for how to get into Chicago. When I ran Houston Marathon back in January of 2022, I qualified for Chicago. So I was given a guaranteed entry based on that qualifying time. And the qualifying time for my age group and for females is a three hour and 35 minute marathon. I ran a 331 in Houston. When registration opened for Chicago, the fall of 2022, I was automatically guaranteed an entry when I registered because of my qualifying time. And again, you could have run as a charity or done the lottery as well. For New York, you can qualify for New York, but it is a very, very competitive time. It's even faster than the Boston qualifying time. I believe the qualifying spots close up quickly based on what a couple of y'all have told me. You can also do New York City through the lottery program. You can do it through a charity spot. Like I said, the time qualifier. And then there is also the nine plus one program, which is really only convenient if you live near or in New York. It is a program where you run nine of the New York Roadrunners races and then volunteer at one. So I guess it is doable if you travel to New York a lot or if you live in New York. I think that the Chicago lottery is much less competitive than the New York lottery lottery, but that's just based off of what I've been hearing, not off of fact. So take that for what you will. Also, that being said, most of this video is going to be based off of my personal experience. So do your research, make sure you're looking into everything, watch other YouTube videos, chat with other people who have run both marathons. This is just everything that I can share based off the experience that I had running both. All right. So you've gotten into either Chicago or New York. We'll talk about entry fee next. For Chicago, I believe it is around, let's see, I looked this up. It says that it's $240. I want to say I paid closer to $300 by the time there was like a registration fee and a couple of other things when I signed up online. That could change in years to come, but I want to say it's just under $300. For New York, a little bit more expensive at $295. Again, this is just what I'm finding online. I think it will end up being more than $295 and enter into that $300 range once you pay registration fees and all of that. Full disclosure, I did not pay for my entry fee into the New York City Marathon because I ran through a sponsored bib. So I guess I'll backtrack a little bit. That is another way that you can get into these marathons is through a sponsored bib. I'll get into more of that later. But I did not pay for my entry into the New York City Marathon, so I cannot give you exact what that cost was for the 2023 New York Marathon. And then I will get into cost for like the weekend itself shortly. But as far as training, had a lot of questions on how to train for each and what would I have done differently if I were running New York City as my goal race rather than Chicago. So just a little backstory. I, like I said, qualified for the Chicago Marathon back in 2022. I was able to get a guaranteed entry. So when I qualified and got into Chicago, I knew that I would run that as a goal race depending on how I performed at the Eugene Marathon back in the spring. I ran that April 30th of 2023. My goal was a 320 and I ran a 324. So knowing that I still wanted to get that 320 goal, I shifted and said, okay, I'm going to try to PR at Chicago and finally get that 320 time. It wasn't until this summer, later this summer, that I knew I had a spot in the New York Marathon. So that being said, I was already training for Chicago and planning on that being my goal race. Also, Chicago is known as a flat and fast course. So that is 
is why I wanted to PR at Chicago. If the roles were reversed, I would have trained the same for New York. I would have definitely made sure all of my long runs had hills and that I trained hills in my speed workouts. However, Austin is already really hilly and I train with my coach once a week during my speed workouts and we already do hilly routes. So I don't think much of my training would have shifted. However, let's say I was running Chicago for fun, had that first and then was running New York as my goal race four weeks later, we probably would have shifted my training that my final long run landed with Chicago. I would have run it as an easy pace long run and then started my taper for New York and ran that as a goal race. Do not recommend doing that. I personally think that it's best if you are doing your goal race first because then you're not risking injury or anything crazy like that happening by running just for fun a few weeks prior. I also would never suggest racing both that close together. I do not even recommend running a marathon that close together. I would not have done it if it weren't for a work opportunity that I just truly could not pass up. I do content creation for a living, so this is my livelihood, and that is why I took the opportunity to run New York. I had my coach in on it with me, I had my physical therapist with me, and we agreed that I would only run New York if I was healthy enough after Chicago to do so. As for my training in between, I took about a week off after Chicago and then I just had very minimal mileage leading up to New York. I started with a six mile long run, went to eight miles and then 12. And then my runs during the week maxed out at about five miles. I was only doing strides and one minute pickups for my pace work. Nothing too crazy, just keeping the legs fresh while still focusing on recovery. Next we'll discuss travel logistics, costs, for the weekend and where to stay. We'll start with Chicago. I personally, where I live within the United States, it's easier to get to Chicago. Easy, direct flight, a little bit under two hours. I also think Chicago is a little bit easier for figuring out where to stay because the start and finish line are in Grant Park. So you pretty much know that if you're staying near the start, you're also gonna be near the finish. I personally just think that makes things a little bit easier. We stayed in the West Loop at Soho House. This is a little bit further from the start. I wanna say I was a little bit over a mile and a half away. Definitely a little bit less convenient to get to the start corral. However, it made getting around and such throughout the weekend a lot easier because we weren't dealing with the road closures and being stuck within the course. I also think Chicago is very easy to get around. The expo was close by, all of the events were really close by, food's amazing, and there are plenty of good hotels nearby and available for the Chicago Marathon. As far as New York, a little bit more difficult because you start in Staten Island and then you finish in Manhattan. I would recommend staying in Manhattan if you can stay close to Central Park, that would be my top recommendation. We stayed at the Thompson Central Park Hotel, which was a 10 minute walk from the finish line. And I feel like that made things so much easier for getting back. I stayed in Manhattan last year as well at Hotel Hugo when I was there to spectate. That we could not walk back. We had to get an Uber back and it took forever. The subways were packed. So if you can stay close to the finish line and walking distance, I highly recommend that. Otherwise, you'll just have to figure out getting back on the subway, calling an Uber, dealing with race day traffic, etc. which not that big of a deal. It just kind of depends on your priorities. For a cost for the total weekend itself, Chicago, we paid for completely out of pocket on our own. It was a race that I paid for. We stayed for our hotel, paid for obviously our flights, food, um, shopping while we were there, etc. So it definitely does add up. That being said, you can definitely make it more or less expensive depending on, again, your priorities, what you wanna do while you're there. For New York, again, full transparency, I was there sponsored through Michelob Ultra. They were kind enough to cover my airfare, my hotel, and some of my meals. So that being said, I am not sure the cost of the New York Marathon as far as stay and all of that goes. However, I can confidently say it was probably all in all more expensive than Chicago. It's definitely very expensive to stay near Central Park, near that finish line. And then obviously New York is just a very expensive city. I think we ordered two beers to our room through room service and it was like $45. New York is definitely very expensive. Chicago is as well, but I think if I had to say if one is more than the other, I would say New York. Travel logistics as far as getting there via airplane, a little bit further than Chicago. We're in the air for about three and a half hours to get to New York versus two to get to Chicago. There's still a direct flight. Obviously this depends on where you live within the United States or if you're out of the country. You also have to consider getting from the airport to your hotel. Always a little bit more difficult in New York than it is in Chicago. I'll leave it there. If you have any other specific questions about either or, please let me know. Next, we will get into each course. Chicago, flat and fast. New York, 
lots of hills, lots of bridges. I will say in Chicago, I think I read somewhere that there are like 37 hairpin turns. You're turning a lot in Chicago. What I really liked about New York is that you were on a straightaway for miles at a time. You weren't turning a ton. And I don't know, I personally feel like on my joints, it's a little harder for that turn, but you're trading the turns for hills in New York, the hills are just a very long, slow incline. There are a few steep hills towards the end. I wanna say it was around mile 19, one of the bridges, and then around 23. Whenever you head into Central Park at the end, you have a handful of rolling hills. There's one pretty decent sized hill towards the end around mile 26. Definitely looking at flat versus very hilly. I personally wanted to run Chicago as my PR. Obviously all things considered that I said before, but also knowing that it's a flat course. Now that I've run a hillier marathon course, I personally think I benefit from switching up my muscles and giving some muscles a break that are pushing really hard on the flat surface. For example, at Chicago, your quads are just dead by the time you get to 26. I did not feel that way in New York. However, I was not pushing as hard of a pace, so that could definitely play its role. But I really do like hills. I like training on hills. I like having the switch up. I love having the downhill after the uphill. I'm not saying that the hills are bad, but definitely something that you wanna consider with your training. I also felt the New York Marathon just had so much to see. Chicago was beautiful as well, but it just did not feel maybe as exciting as far as what we were looking at throughout the course. I was also a lot more focused in Chicago, whereas in New York, I was able to like take in the sights and the scenes around me, so that could also play its role. Here's an airplane. That leads into which is better for a BQ, which is a Boston qualifying time, slash which is better for a first marathon. For BQ, Chicago is known to be a flat, fast course, like I said. So if you just want a nice, flat, fast course, I would say Chicago. I also think the logistics of Chicago were a little bit simpler. So if you want less mental space taken up by figuring out the start line, sitting in the athlete's village, all of that stuff, I would say Chicago. Same with if it's your first marathon. Chicago just felt a little bit easier as far as logistics go. It's a little bit less people than New York. Definitely a very huge marathon at around 40,000 people and then more like 50,000 people run in New York. But I will say New York was the most magical experience and so energetic. I can imagine it would be an incredible first marathon from the standpoint of the crowds being there to support you and just the magic in the city. If your first marathon is just to finish and enjoy, then I would say New York. If your first marathon, you're really nervous and you're not sure what to expect, you're worried about the hills, you're really nervous about 26.2 miles, then I would say maybe Chicago would be better for you just because you're not also worrying about the hills and the logistics beforehand. So it just kind of depends. I would say for sure though, if you're looking to get your BQ, Chicago might be the better bet. But again, I also just said that I feel like I might prefer hills during a marathon. So I also don't know because I was running a hilly course when I was running for fun. And that could have changed if I were running for real. I'll know more once I run a very hilly course in Boston in April. As far as anxiety and nerves leading up to each race, again, Chicago was a goal race. New York was to run just for fun. I will say I was still very nervous before New York. Chicago, I think I just accepted that what will be will happen and that's all I can do. I've already done the training, I'm already here. There's nothing more I could do to reach my goal. I slept like a baby the night before. I was definitely nervous, but I was not as nervous as I was for my first marathon or for Eugene back in April. For New York, I could not fall asleep the night before. I think I was pretty anxious more so about the logistics of the race and being at the start village for so long before my race start and knowing that I would have that time in the morning to just kind of sit and wait around. So I don't think I was as nervous for New York from a race perspective since it was just for fun. I think I was just more anxious and antsy to see what it would be like with all of the logistics the morning of. Speaking of logistics, expo, as well as the morning of, I think the expo for either marathon was great, very well organized, obviously all the fun shopping, the bib experience was very simple and seamless for both. I will say the morning of is more so where you want to consider what works best for you. Chicago, you basically just walk to your start corral. There's signs everywhere that tell you where to go. Alec rode me there on his bike, dropped me off. I was probably waiting around for an hour. So I just walked to my corral, 
went to the bathroom and then the corral closes. I can't remember exactly what the time frame is. They, but let's say the corral closed 20 minutes before the start time. I got into my corral, had my clothes to donate in the donation bins, took those off, did a little warm up, and then was ready to go. Much, much easier scenario. I wanna say I woke up at four, left around 5.30 to get to my corral. Maybe I didn't leave until like six to get to my corral. Was there by 6.30. It didn't actually take me 30 minutes to get there, but let's just say approximate time. Got there at 6.30. My start time was 7.30, but I was, I was wave one, corral D. So I didn't cross the start line right at 7.30 because A, B, and C had to go before me. So logistics for the morning of, very simple for Chicago. And then, like I said, you're starting in the same place that you're finishing pretty much. Finish line and start line are not the same, but they're like close by each other. For New York, it's definitely a process to get to the start. So let's say you're staying in Manhattan. You need to get your ass to Staten Island. They have plenty of transportation provided for you and you sign up for it. I wanna say a couple months or maybe a couple weeks before you head to the race. So you can either take the bus, which is about an hour long ride. You take the bus to Staten Island, you get on the bus, you get off the bus, and then you're at the Athletes Village or Start Village, whatever it's called. Or you can take the ferry. The ferry is just a quick ride over to Staten Island. You get off the ferry, you get on a bus, and then that bus drops you off. So there's definitely more steps if you take the ferry, but I have heard the ferry is very seamless, very quick. The ferry will have really pretty views because you're on the water, obviously. The bus goes over a bridge, so I assume the views would be great too, but it just kind of depends on what feels better for you. I cannot speak on personal experience because I had a VIP bus with Michelob Ultra. So I got on my bus that was just a couple of blocks from the hotel, we got dropped off, and then I had the VIP tent through Michelob Ultra at the Start Village. I cannot speak on personal experience based off of if you were to get in through a charity spot or through the lottery, what that's like for signing up for transportation, but from my friends who have done both the bus and the ferry, I have heard that it's very well organized, volunteers are leading you along the whole way, you just have to mentally prep for that time, and the fact that you're gonna have to wake up pretty early, have your breakfast, have all of your snacks packed, have your tossaway clothes packed, you're gonna get through the steps and go through the motions, but then once you're at the Athletes Village, you just get to sit and chill and wait for your start. Chicago, the corrals kind of felt like a free-for-all, whereas at New York, it felt super organized, everything was right on time and good to go. But I will say, then you're trading off being at the Start Village for so long, whereas Chicago, you just get to leave your hotel and go straight to your corral. The sitting around and waiting at the Start Village is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Granted, I was in the Michelob Ultra Tent, but from friends that I got to see in the Athletes Village. People had their AirPods, people had um, blankets that they were laying out on, sleeping. You pack all of your snacks. You need to practice this, knowing that you're running the New York Marathon. Practice what snacks you can eat that feel good. Practice waking up extra early before you start your long run. Practice all of those things. You should have that set and ready so that when that time comes, you have a plan, you know what to expect, and you feel freaking good about it. I. Felt pretty good about having my breakfast at the hotel and then I brought different snacks with me to munch on before the start. I did also bring snacks for the Chicago start because I did still have to wait an hour, but I just had, again, things that I had practiced during my training. Now we'll move on. You have crossed the start line, crowd support. They're incredible in both places. I will say, in Chicago, I felt that everybody in the crowd was there to cheer for their people, okay? They're looking so intensely for their person and then they're ready to freaking go once their person passes. In New York City, I felt like every single person out there cheering and spectating was there to cheer for every single person on the course. Like, I get chills, I just got goosebumps saying that because I felt an incredible, overwhelming feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm strangers with all these people. Yeah, I feel like they're literally here to cheer for me. I'm not saying that people in Chicago weren't there to support everyone because I definitely did get those feelings throughout the course. It just felt much more impactful in New York. And at Chicago, I will say, the crowd support felt really overstimulating for me. That's because Chicago was a goal race. I thought after running a really lonely marathon in Eugene that I would love having the crowd support and the rest of the runners to push me through. Instead, I definitely felt a little bit anxious and overstimulated at times because the crowds were so loud. I don't think I heard my music for like at least three quarters of the marathon because it was so loud. 
And again, that's so fun. I love it. I think I am just more of an anxious person. I do get overstimulated more easily. Knowing that it was a goal race, I think that's why in New York, I freaking loved it. Did not feel overwhelmed once. However, I do remember feeling like, mm, I think if I were running a goal race right now, this wouldn't be as exciting and as thrilling, especially when it comes to crowds on the course. Tons of people are running these marathons. In Chicago, I felt like I was stuck with a pack of people the whole time. You would turn a cor corner, everybody kind of stampedes into each other. I tripped over someone, like it's very, very intense with all the people running. I think that also helps carry you through, but it is something to mentally prepare for. In New York, I do remember being stuck in clusters of people and thinking, wow, if I were racing right now, this would really suck because you just could not break through. But again, that did not matter for me since I was running party pace and had the situations been flipped, I maybe would have felt differently and felt like Chicago was better versus New York. So I really think it has everything to do with the fact that Chicago, I was there to grind. I was there to put in the work. New York, I was there for pure enjoyment, party pace. I was there for work to capture content and it felt much more relaxed from a runner's standpoint. As far as the finish line, congrats. You made it and finding your families. So Chicago, I definitely was not expecting the shoot to be as long as it was to get from finish line to meet your family. It was very well organized. You walk through, you got your water, you got a beer, you got your metal, you got your little emergency blanket. And then I was to my family within at least 15 minutes, I wanna say. There are big stand-up balloon things that have letters on them so that you just go to the letter that corresponds with your last name. Your family's there, it's great, then you're done. For New York, you cross the finish line, you get your medal, you get your finisher bag, you get an amazing parka, oh, the freak, or no, it's a poncho, whatever. The poncho is incredible. So much better than the stupid emergency blanket that's like that foily blanket, but you definitely pay for that poncho in your race entry fee, if that makes sense. But then you're walking for a long time to exit Central Park and to find your family. It feels much more overwhelming because you're definitely just kind of like spit out into the streets. I did not see the family section at the New York Marathon. I think there is a way to like find your family based on a letter that corresponds with your last name. I exited through, I think it was like 74th Street to meet my husband, he was at a bar with some friends that was right by that first exit to get out of the shoot. Either situation, you're walking for a little bit after the finish line, so be prepared for that. But if you need help, there's tons of staff there to help you, to help scoot you through, to help you with directions and all of that. But I do think both are worth being prepared for once you cross the finish line. It's actually very good for your legs to get that little shakeout walk in and that little cool down. So try to look at it as a positive thing. Try to look at it as a second that you have to just kind of like reflect on the race and celebrate the fact that you're done. You have that moment of time to yourself. That is all I have to say about New York versus Chicago. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. I don't think that one marathon is any better than the other. I think it depends on so many things goals, your distance away from each city, your ability to get into one or the other. I think if you've already run New York, you should absolutely try to run Chicago. If you've already run Chicago, you should absolutely try to run New York instead of running one again. I would love to go back to New York. I would love to go back and try to PR again at Chicago. But I think if you've already run one, definitely try to run the other the next time because they're both so amazing. It was so incredible to meet so many of you at both races and both of them honestly hold a very, very special place in my heart. I think a huge part of why I loved New York so much was because it was purely just for fun and I got to really enjoy every single mile. Whereas Chicago, I was really there to just focus on pace and to try to get a PR. I did not end up PRing at Chicago, but I still learned a lot in that marathon and I am very grateful for it. So all that to be said, these were all just things that I learned and that I noticed. So definitely do your own research. Definitely ask other people their opinions and their experiences as well. I just talked way too much. I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you got into either race, I hope that you have the best time. I hope you have an amazing, healthy, happy training cycle. Make sure to subscribe so that you can keep up with all of my marathon training things, recommendations, etc. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Nicole M Runs. Okay, we'll talk to y'all later.